Well, unfortunately, I was not expecting to do a live stream like this tonight. And it's a very unfortunate circumstances yesterday in Louisville when uh, UPS flight 2976 crashed just uh, after takeoff off of uh, runway one seven right um 2025 i'll be honest has been a very disturbing year for me and i don't know why but this accident kind of hit me hard but uh, i'm gonna do this live stream i'm gonna do my best so bear with me here's the topics so we're gonna talk about what we know so far we're gonna review a couple angles of the crash i'm just gonna give you some initial observations i'm not gonna get in here and speculate on causes but i'm gonna show some things that uh might make us wonder like what is going on in this video in these videos and then um we're going to review the similar incidents in American Airlines on one flight 191. A lot of people are drawing a connection here. I'll see what you guys think. I spoke with my friend that flies MD-11s at FedEx, and he kind of offered me a couple insights into that. I thought it was interesting. And then I'm going to show you uh, what pilots are saying in closed Facebook groups. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, before we begin, obviously, uh, hearts and prayers go out to those who affected. Like, I don't know why, but this one hit me hard. I'm not sure. You know, I flew for PSA. In watching that crash, I flew that exact airplane that went down in the Potomac, and I, I don't understand why this one seems to be hitting me more hard. I don't know if it's just because uh, the one, the other one was at night and you couldn't really see it. I, I just, I'm not sure, but it, you know, this one it got me with maybe it's just all the angles of the video. Uh, these are just my own vi uh, views and videos and my opinions. Like it's just my own. I'm just giving you kind of an observation. I'm I'm here to like bridge the gap between passengers. A lot of people just feel comfort when they hear a pilot talk about this, and that's kind of what it is. And the information is forthcoming. You know, we, we're going to talk about in a second, the engine looks to be off the runway right uh, on takeoff and, and separated completely. But we got to verify a lot of these information. So this is a lot of this stuff is just apparently and initially. Um, uh, again, I'm going to give you my initial observations, not the final report. And I just wanted to let you know and be transparent. It's a perfect time for you guys to be transparent with you guys is that I'm donating this ad revenue. A lot of times I turn off uh, my monetization on videos and then what happens is uh, YouTube runs ads anyway. So I figured I'm going to leave the ad on, but I'm going to donate it to any cause. So if you guys are aware of like a GoFundMe or something for the families, uh, let me know. And then, you know, this is a perfect example. If I, if a video gets 336,000 views, this number can change, but you know, that's $1,400. It's not going to change anyone's life. I'm not saying it's nothing, but it's not like a ton of money. But if this video did like 2 million, you know, it might be around closer to eight to 10,000. Either way, I'm going to be sending that money off because that's, I'm not here to make money off this. This is just uh, to relay this information. And then hopefully if this, you know, hopefully that money can help in any way down the road, I'll, I'll call that a win. All right, let's take a look. So what we know so far, this was yesterday, November 4th, 2025 is UPS 2976. It was going from Louisville SDF to Honolulu. This thing was fully loaded, had a ton of gas, which you'll see in a second, which just unfortunately added to uh, the, the chaos. Three crew members on board. Uh, right now, this number just keeps climbing. The last I have of this information is nine fatalities, 15 injured, 16 unaccounted for. And looking at some of the, the data, we got to an altitude of 175 feet. It looked like it kind of at the very end there, um, a visible left engine fire. And I'll talk about more about this in a second. I have never seen such a huge fire off the left engine. Most of the time that's contained, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second in, in my uh, observations. And the, the weather appeared to be good. Uh, this was the route. So it's taxi out. I've flown to this airport many times. I've flown in and out of this airport. Uh, I, you know, I don't know why I have friends at UPS. This one just kind of seemed to hit home for me. And I've been, uh, you know, I've taken off this runway more times than I can count. As you can see, it taxied out to one seven, right. It, and then take off at some point, obviously had the issue with the engine fire, had trouble getting lift. It looks like it didn't get out of ground effect. And it kind of went off the end of the runway there. And that was the 513 was the last transmitted uh, position. All right. Now this is a trigger warning. I thought, I, I kind of thought about this for a while in this live. I was like, should I show the video or not? And I ultimately decided I should, because this is a educational B I'm giving you this warning. If you don't want to watch it, I, I feel bad thinking about the families that, you know, open up TikTok And the first video is all these high def HD videos of these planes crashing. I feel, you know, kind of bad, uh, you know, thinking about that, but either way, I'm feeling like I'm going to go ahead and show this just for the educational standpoint. And if you don't want to, then obviously go ahead and uh, either you know click off the video or click ahead.
huge fireball. So now I'm going to go back so that because the video plays automatically. That was the first video I was sent. And all I was sent was it was probably maybe 45 minutes after this. I, I get a text and it's this video. And I'm looking at it and I see something, you know, before the preview, before you start playing. And I'm thinking, okay, it's just an engine fire or maybe, you know, skid it off the end of the runway. And I watched it and to the whole crash in the fireball. And I just thought my heart sank. I was just like, come on. This is 2025. It just keeps getting, you know, piling up here. And I'm like, how is this possible? And, and watching that video, it's just insane. Um, and I'll get to the initial observation. So let's watch the rest of those videos. We'll go through here. This video to me is crazy. I mean, look at this trail of destruction. It is so much gas and fuel in the accident spread out over. I, I mean, that's got to be, it looks like a half mile long. And I heard there was 50 different fire departments that had to come in here and handle this. So obviously, you know, a special thanks to the, the first responders and all the people that came there. And I'm sure we're going to hear some good stories about uh, heroes uh, and people that stepped up to help save people. This is another video, hard to watch. You know, other thing I noticed, landing gear is down. It's rolling over. I Obviously, it's rolling towards the side that the engine appeared to be not only fire, but appeared to separate. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming, right. They, for whatever reason, they didn't, they, I'm guessing they didn't pull the landing gear up because simply they couldn't get out of ground effect. If I couldn't get out of ground effect, I wouldn't pull the landing gear up either. And, um, you know, and I just want to say that from what I can tell, I feel, I, I'll tell you personally as a pilot, that one of the worst parts about seeing these accidents is the thought of putting yourself in that position and knowing that, you know, this just seemed like it went on for so long. And at some point, these guys knew it was the end, but you still got 10 seconds to kind of process it, at least on, you know, certain accidents or different things. It's, you know, or deaths, I guess you'd say it's an instantaneous uh, death. This is, it just kind of breaks my heart to think about that. And then to, to know that this is like, man, these people had time to process it. It's horrible. But my initial observation the first thing I thought is like, you know, an engine fire is something we train for. We train for engine fires. In fact, a lot of time when I was a sim instructor and you're taking off, it's called a V1 cut. We kill your engine right after it's the point. V1 is go, no go. Before V1, you abort after you're continuing on. And what we'll do is we'll kill your engine. And in half the time, we'll just give you a fire or half the time it's a flame out or some other type of damage. Now, with that said... When you look at a normal engine fire, it is usually contained. It's contained inside the cowl, and you see maybe some flames coming out the back. But this appears to be, and when we have, when we look at this engine laying on the ground, that is the entire, it looks like the entire internal part, the core of that. We call that the core of the engine. That's the center part. And the other part, you have these N1, it's called the fan blades that bypass. And that looks to me like there is just fuel flowing out uncommandedly. And it's, it, you know, obviously that's a huge problem in a fire. The one thing I noticed in other videos that were slowed down, it, the, the, so the MD-11 has three engines. You have the number one, the number two, which is up on the tail, and then number three, which is the right engine. The number one apparently appears to be completely detached. Now, it's either some FOD or something got up into, it looks like it got up into engine number two because you do see like a flash out the back engine. I don't have it pulled up right here, but there's like some type of flash coming out there or it's maybe it's a compressor stall. Either way, from this vantage point, it appears that both engines took damage because you could make sense, right? All that counting, that engine's on the ground, right? Obviously not supposed to happen. The, the counting other things might've gone up and in and got sucked into that engine. And now you got a full plane that's fully loaded and you're not getting off the ground with, with just one engine, not fully loaded, not like that. Um, you know, and we're going to talk more about that in a second. Let's get to the AA-191. I, I kind of want to know more your thoughts. I've, I've, I've read through about this accident. I've, uh, you know, done my due diligence on this. I've learned about it. But a, a lot of people are calling that this, this was a DC-10 out of Chicago and the left engine detached and it caused, I think, some severe hydraulic problems. And you can see they're banked basically 90 degrees, if not more, and completely lost uh, control of the plane and crashed, uh, killing everyone on board. I'm wondering what your guys' thoughts are. I don't have as much to say at this because we don't have enough information, but I see a lot of people. I saw a mentor pilot. I saw a lot of people drawing parallels here to this uh, accident. So I'm curious to know your thoughts. 
Okay. I talked to my friend who's an MD-11 pilot for FedEx, and I just kind of wanted to get a basic overview of what he thought. And so from his standpoint, from what I got the gist of, was he said that an MD-11 that's fully loaded, he said that if you have two engines, you're on a heavy, you know, there's a lot of factors that go in this, right? If it's hot, if you're at high altitude, you're, uh, you know, you're over, you know, you're at max capacity and your max weight, gross takeoff. He said two engines is already going to be very sluggish. And I've seen that we've in the triple seven, I've loaded up the triple seven. Uh, you know, you were taken off out of Haneda. Now, again, this is in a simulator. You simulate this and you're heavy. And I mean, that thing just, it just takes forever to get to climb these profiles on a single engine. And so that would make sense. He's saying two engines already going to be sluggish. He's telling me that if both engines went, there's just no chance on single engine. And I honestly, as a pilot, I don't know. I've never flown a three or four engine airplane. So I didn't know that. I was thinking maybe the engines are so powerful that it could take an empty airplane probably could have. But as far as what he told me, he said, there's zero chance in one engine. So that's the issue. If both engines went out, you know, it's not going to happen. All right, what's the pilot uh, talk going on here? This is just a couple comments. I'm in a cl closed Facebook group. I like to see what everybody else is saying and kind of to keep you guys in the loop. So obviously I blank out the names, but this is kind of what they're saying. So this this guy, I believe he's retired now, but he says, I am extremely familiar with uh, AA191. That was the accent I just referenced. I uh, qualified in every seat in the DC-10 during my career and was a Czech airman in these in the ancient times. The engine separated didn't cause the crash. It was the retraction of the slats due to hydraulic failure on that side. So what he's saying is that it appeared to be the hydraulic failure retracted the slats uh, for whatever reason. I don't know why that would happen. I'm not familiar with those systems. And so he's saying in that AA191, he's, he's saying that basically the slats the slats are those leading edge. So the flaps come out of the back of the wing. The slats come out of the front. And the slats basically help you. Uh, you. You can generate, you can fly slower and generate more lift with those out. Obviously, once you get up to cruise, you need to bring it at, back because it doesn't make sense. Um, you know, uh, random fact, the, an accident that happened in Lexington, Kentucky in 2006 was a CRJ-200 where they took off the wrong runway at night and couldn't see. It was a CRJ-200, did not have slats. So it's a smaller plane, but it takes more runway to get off the airplane or get off the ground. Had they had a CRJ-700 with slats, they would have had enough runway and would have cleared and easily been able to take off even if they went on the wrong runway. So I digress, but he's saying the operating manual recommendation was to pull up and maintain V2 plus 10 is what that's what he's saying. That's what killed them. So he was saying that they said the recommendation was to pull up and maintain V210. So V2 is another climb out speed that we have. And when he said the V2 plus 10, he's saying that the operating manuals told them to pull back. And again, this is the AA191. So we're just looking at some history here. He said the wing stalled. So it would have been the left one in the speed is life. And so he said, and all honestly, I've been retired a few years, but now I'm still sentient. So that's just a little recap for what they're talking about. But let's see what else we're saying. Um, see, and, and this is like, this goes to my point. I'll, there's always be the, this seems to be this big debate. If an accident happens, what you're allowed to say, what you're not allowed to say. And while I do believe there's a debate there, this just shows you how emotional these are just pilots talking in a group, like, Hey, what's going on? We, of course, this is our livelihood. We want to know when some, we're, you know, we're going to analyze things. And he says, are we really pontificating on what happened? Three pilots are effing, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I should have bleeped that out. Dead. We are on our own worst enemy, three or pits eyes, should be no room for Monday morning quarterback. Well, here's the thing. I don't, that just shows you there's fighting even in the group when nobody's posting anything. Um, you know, and this guy put it best. He goes, it's not about, it's, it's about understanding what happened. We pilots, it's what we do. Nobody's, exactly, nobody's blaming the pilots. So this just goes to show you there's infighting even amongst pilots for even talking about it, which I think is a little extreme. It just shows people are a little, a little emotionally attached. Um, so the, the, the other uh, pilot commentary, one of the last comments we had here was, they were told, and I saw this from a Czech airman that just had text, and again, this is all secondhand information. But from what I've seen, there apparently had already been a two hour delay because they were, they were working on engine number one uh, before it took off. And they had said that it was, again, a max weight takeoff. A max weight takeoff is going to be the most critical. You're, you're heavy. It's the most, you know, obviously to get off the ground, it's going to be the most important part of taking off 
uh, you know, is, is you're just going to be the heaviest you're ever going to be. And the fact that they had maintenance two hours prior and they were on a delay, I mean, obviously I'm not going to blame maintenance. I'm not going to say anything, but obviously something catastrophic happened here for the entire engine just to be sitting here on the runway to detach. I've, you, you know, I'll ask other pilots out there. Have you ever seen an engine fire like that in any video? I haven't. It, that that fire was looked like it was just going off the back of the plane, and as far as I can tell, it looks like the pilots did their best to try and generate speed. They tried to. It seemed like they couldn't get out of ground effect. And if you're not aware of ground effect, ground effect is going to give you a little extra lift. There's like this buffer between when you get out of the ground and when you're in ground effect. You have a little extra lift than you normally would if you were out of ground effect. Sad situation all around where obviously information is going to be more forthcoming, but uh, it's, it's, it's a sad thing to watch. I really hate to see this. I hope that um, people, uh, you know, get help with the, the, you know, it's going to obviously be a lot of therapy, a lot of other issues with family. Uh, the one thing I will say is I always look for the positive in things. Obviously, had this been passenger aircraft, that, and it's no exaggeration, I don't, I can, it's kind of an obvious statement. I don't even know why I'm saying it, is that it would have been 20 times. The, the death toll had that been full of passengers. So at least the fact that, I mean, obviously any death is tragic, but at least this could have been so much, so much worse. This could have been maybe one of the, the deadliest aviation accidents in the United States history, or if not close to it. I want to know your thoughts. Let me know. I appreciate it. I just wanted to get on the live stream here and uh, do a video and um, hopefully reassure people. And uh, that's the end of it for tonight. Guys, thanks for uh, tuning in. and. Um, Again, if you're still watching, please like and subscribe. Talk soon.